Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing what was once a rarity, an automatic winding Chagere Lecoult Reverso. This is the Grand Reverso Night and Day. So, across the case, it's 27.5 millimeters in stainless steel, 9.2 millimeters thick, and 46.4 millimeters from lug to lug with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see it is indeed a Grand Reverso, fairly broad. Don't be deceived by the 27.5 millimeter diameter. This wears more like a 41 millimeter round watch. The timepiece, however, is relatively thin, being 9.2 with a barrel-shaped sloped case flank. It'll slide underneath the cuff. I recommend it for a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference. Again, because of the way a Reverso wears, broad and flat, there's not a whole lot of camber or curvature across the wrist. Taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, you can see that the lugs are drilled very close to the case, and then there's a little recess in the case band that allows the strap to be sunken so deeply that you can't even see daylight between strap and case. The strap does pull straight down out of the lugs, which mitigates against many fit problems. The strap is thick, though. Large rectangular scale alligator leather in semi-gloss black with a monotone stitch. You can see it has bolstering to give it volume and flair to match the expansion of the lug profile, which is conical when viewed from profile. The watch has calf skin on the bottom, gator on the top, and then you can see a deployment clasp here that is a double fold in stainless steel and it offers a little curvature to the chassis, so on the underside of your wrist, it matches the curve of your wrist in this double-fold deployment, acting as insurance against accidentally dropping your watch while you are donning it or removing it at bedside. The Reverso case has always been more complex than it appears online. If you just look at photos like this, you may think it's simply a rectangle, but when you look at it carefully, you can see that the lugs are conical, squared off on their ends. The case flank is vaulted with gadroons or strakes that curve all the way around, and you can see that there is a remarkable amount of complexity in the assembly of the case, which includes the outer chassis and then the inner vessel. Between them, they have about 50 parts, and before the 1980s, there were no water-resistant reversos, but since that period, JLC has managed to achieve a standardized 30 meters of water resistance in spite of the immense complexity of these rotating modular cases. So it does have a standard dress watch level of water resistance. You can see in good taste, the crown is somewhat sunken into the profile, so it doesn't stand out unduly. Everything is of high polish with the exception of the wells of the strakes, which are media blasted. The dial is very simple. We have several different recursive rectangles. We have the bezel, we have the crystal, we have the outer dial with a dental style track outboard, then we have the hour track with a vertical satin finish in silver and simple art deco vertically oriented black Arabic numerals, then we have an inner dial with sort of a piano key track, you might call it, for reading the minutes and the hours, and then there's a pyramid or a clou de Paris at center with a little sunken sub-register at six that at first glance might appear to be a seconds display. It's actually a 24-hour display because this is the night and day, so you know, for example, whether you're looking at six in the morning or six at night. It's quite easy to see. That is six in the morning. That's 6 a.m. You can also see that there's a little bit of a contrast between a straight line horizontal motif that represents the nighttime hours and then a rosette pattern that represents the daytime hours. So it's actually bifurcated to distinguish between day and night. The hands at center are blued broadsword style. We have an alpha hand for the 24 hour display and then an applied yellow gold JL logo. There's not much to see on the reverse side because as originally conceived in 1931, the Reverso was a sports watch. Back in the day when crystals truly were made of glass, the idea was to create a sports watch that could be whacked. Ostensibly for polo players though, that tale may be more apocryphal and romantic than valid and literal, all the same. The idea was to have a side of the watch that was basically unbreakable during active lifestyle activities, such as they were in the 30s, and then when you were ready to tell time again, you could rotate it to the side that displayed the dial. Well, it became a canvas for engraving and customization. Everything from family coats of arms, engravings, lacquerings, enamel, military units, because after all, the watch was fairly durable, 
it wasn't entirely out of place in a combat scenario. But over time, the reverso became a canvas for a second dial or a complication. This is the original layout with a buff case back that you can leave as is and baffle your friends. After all, what on earth is he wearing on his wrist? Or you can customize it to mark a, a milestone or perhaps a family coat of arms, symbols, or motto. Inside, we have an automatic winding movement that first surfaced in the late 1990s. You'll recall caliber 967 from the Sporting Reverso Grand Sport Automatique. This is the 967B. It's an automatic winder. It's completely encased in the inner case, which means it's a very small movement. It has a power reserve of 36 to 38 hours. It beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It pivots on 28 joules. It has the 12 and 24 hour formats. And this being a relatively modern JLC watch, the movement is also free sprung and it has been through the master 1000 hours test, which is a test of chronometry, durability, winding efficiency, power reserve, all as a fully cased up watch and lasting 1000 hours. First launched in 1992 and implemented across all the reversos after 2004, the master 1000 hours control is a comprehensive test of the full watch that goes beyond the bare requirements of the COSC. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.